Welcome to Data Collection, Compilation, Communication, and Reporting. And it is August 11th. With me today, you see him. He is Jamie Blackburn. He's the director of iAdvantage Software in Cary, North Carolina. Is that right? Is that, did I do that right, Jamie? That's correct, yeah. All right. I am your GovBrief host. I'm Dave Lowe. We'll take you through this today. We, we got a whole heck of a lot of interest in this from multiple places all over. This is a true interagency briefing, so we appreciate you guys being here. I know that we uh, we have some folks that's all census. No surveys happening there, Jamie. Not at all. <laughs> so we appreciate you guys being here. VA, a lot of folks from the VA signed up, but you can see there's. we just want to thank you for joining us and make sure that we get to what you want. It's best briefing ever from Jeff says it includes information. It's something slightly lower than a technical expert. Jamie, don't get too technical. Okay. That's I'll what we're up. talking about. I'll uh, slightly. Sarah, Sarah App, if I mess that up from the FAA, I apologize. If I learn how to maintain data integrity, love it. From uh, Amina, from ICE, it, any of it is relatable. Jamie, okay. any, any of it. So the best briefing ever. So she's been on a whole bunch of briefings where there's nothing relatable at all. Okay. Uh, so Charlem Charlemar, is that what you say? Okay, USPTO, devised data and survey results and survey tools. We will exactly be talking about that. Barbara from the FAA, I'm not sure what to expect and would be interested in how this brief can be beneficial to aerospace medicine. Fantastic. And we'll find out from you, Barbara, if that is. Margaret from DOE, rules of con roles of contracting officer in the process. Yes, there is a role of contracting in this process. And Jennifer from Census, I come away knowing how to collect data with no errors. That's fantastic. That is awesome. We appreciate you guys joining us, and we'll do our best to make this the best briefing ever. Terry says, please address this. Does this have authorization to operate in the VA beyond the VA firewall? And the answer is, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Jan from Jenny from FDIC, shouting it, data integrity discussion, present takeaways I can use. Okay, very good. We want data integrity discussion. Okay, Isa, how could research management centers provide effective reporting on research performance for the organization? We will talk about that as well because you want to have that all the way through the process, right, Jamie? Right. Lisa from Treasury, how is R&D data different from other data categories in data management quality and necessity for cleansing? You can answer that right now, Jamie. It's actually not different. It's no. all our data should be kept in the same way with That's right. quality and, and, and integrity. And if you do it right at the front end, it'll help you on the back end. That's right. Yeah, That's the message for today. Tatiana from NPS. I like to have redundancy. So if someone messes up a file, that never happens. Tatiana, never happens. Is there a backup? Do you have the best practice suggestions for that? We actually do. As a matter of fact, Tatiana. Uh, Jeff, Treasury, what, recommend, what recommended strategies for ensuring data integrity and accessibility of systems and requirements evolve in the future? Love it. Very good, Jeff. That means we are going to be talking about all that stuff today. As a matter of fact, we're hoping we get all those pieces in for you. If not, we will make sure we get it to you. I'm going to talk, give you some introductions to these, these guys from my advantage. That's why we're here talking about the, the structure. They're going to give you the framework. We're going to talk about the challenges and uh, that framework, exactly how that can be applied to you and your agency. Uh, what the e What is the e-study platform and what that means and how you can implement it? Maximum data flexibility and integrity, and we'll make sure we get to your Q&A and answer anything that you need across this, including procurement options and additional resources. You will find, and a matter of fact, right this second, you will find that you, hold on, got to do this right to everyone, here are the links that you can get to the presentation as well as the capability statement for iAdvantage so that you can download those things for your reading pleasure. And if you have been living under a rock and you don't know how Zoom works, you can go up to that point right up at the top and pick that and you can make things change all over the place, drag that little doodah thing and you can make us bigger, smaller, whatever it is. And we do love, love, love participation. So make sure that you're involved. You can chat, you can raise your hand, you can do the Q&A, doesn't matter. Go ahead, let us know where you're from and what you're interested in. 
We'd love to know that. And if you have something in, that is particular to you and your agency that you don't want to share with everybody else, send it to info at iAdvantageSoftware.com. And I'm guaranteeing you, guarantee you that, Jamie, you're going to have somebody answer that question, right? Absolutely. So there you go. Quick disclaimer. This not this is not affiliated or endorsed by GSA, even though these guys are GSA schedule holders or any other agency and is provided to you, the audience, for informational purposes only. And participation in this briefing is voluntary and is not an engagement by government personnel for endorsement or commitment to purchase from any vendor, including iAdvantage. We say that because that's what GSA has made us do ever since I think that was back at 2015 when we did this. So speaking of participation, why did you decide to show up here today? Are you in management and you want your data to work? Are you in R&D and you have a current data collection need? Are you just tired of scrubbing data? Tired of scrubbing data. I'm in procurement. I want to know about iAdvantage or my boss made me come. Bunch of folks already saying my boss made me come. Love it. So let us know about that. And while you're filling that out, I'm going to introduce you once again to Mr. Jamie Blackbird from iAdvantage. Tell us about how you guys got started, what you're doing, especially when it comes to USDA and EPA. And we'll uh, and we'll, we'll we want to learn more about how your yeah. company operates. So. So we've been around as a software company since 03. We came out of a group of science uh, founded company, companies that uh, merged into finding a need for this software and all the things we're gonna talk about. It just became a way of life for the scientists to use. And so the science company started 03. We're in Cary, North Carolina, which is for all intents and purposes, we're about eight miles away from NC State University, about, mm -hmm. eight, about 10 to 12 miles away from UNC and Duke. So we're in this area commonly known as RTP near Raleigh and between Raleigh and Durham. Um, first of all, we are daily working with uh, supporting our sponsors to submit data to the USDA and EPA. And in fact, our product is a, a methodology they all, that our sponsors use, large seed companies and such like that, as you can see there. Um, we're cloud-based. We just became cloud-based last year. And that's because we're gonna open up the world to all the great things that we can do. Cloud-based just enables us to basically provide our customers just everything they need as time goes on here. We're GXP compliant and GXP is for all those things that you need good practice and, and, and protocols to go down a line to make sure that the data you collect is straight and true. So our systems are built off that. And of course, we're a small business and we're on GSA schedule holder. And I love that. And we will get to, to that in a little bit. I tell you what, what I find really interesting and what other folks are finding interesting is that you have your basis is the scientific method, right? That's that's, that's right. the framework. And um, because you're doing because you come from that angle, it gives you a, a different perspective. Uh, and this can be applied across all the different agencies. And as you mentioned, it doesn't matter whether it's R&D or other data because you do it right on the front end. And what happens, Jamie? You get a great outcome. There you measure you go. twice, you cut once, and it really That's, enables it at the end. That's exactly right. So let's talk about some of the big data challenges. Let's, and and this, sure. this is universal, right? Right. So, so right now, every 15 minutes, the world of data is growing, and we're all experiencing this. I, I don't know how our the folks in the audience feel, but the one thing we know as we even go through this, the amounts of data, I think it's almost two megabytes every second, uh, our world is growing. It's 463 exabytes. I don't know if you know anything about exabytes folks, but um, they're actually, we used to always talk in terabytes, then it became petabytes and now it's exabytes. The next is zettabytes, and then finally yottabytes, which uh, that's gonna be cool. What a great way big to data, call data, you it. have big data. That's, right. that's, Sorry, good. that's good. That's good. <laughs> so this creates a, a huge management issue because this data is all over the place, but more so it's just that the data origination, what we call the, the true north of data, um, we can't always expect to be there. So because it's been possibly falsified, it's there's summations that occur, derivations, and as, let's face it, just an overall manipulation, which basically has a bad reliability of data at the end when you start going down. And sometimes we don't even know what that data value means, what it was meant to be when it first started. 
And so there's huge integrity gaps on what the data when we first collected it and what it's grown to. And that's why our what we feel like is the big need of our scientific process we're gonna be talking about because we're based on science. So it's tricky to convert all those that data. And let's not forget, we all hear about artificial intelligence, machine learning coming down the, the, the pike. So it absolutely is imperative that when you're collecting data, you spend the time planning it. And by using our process and our tool and our platform, you're going to gain that advantage. So growing data for use in business zones will not scale if we don't have this basic idea, the true north of data, we collect it correctly. At least we know one thing that the data we collected is straight and true. It just won't scale if we keep building and building and building and adding. And 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 garbage in, garbage out. That's always been my method. My, That's right. my uh, That's what right. I've done. So so here we go. Now this was great. Last time we did this, this was this was very telling. So how are you? currently collecting your data? Are you doing spreadsheets? You're sending those out, doing paper forms, doing phone, email, you're using a survey tool. Hey, a bunch of folks using survey tool now. Professional survey contractor. And I know what's gonna happen here because uh, statistically speaking, it's gonna be the same as it was last time because we had, I don't know, what do you have? 150 folks last time we talked about this? Yeah. It was a few months ago. So anyhow, let us know how you are doing it. And uh, it's great that a lot of folks are using the survey tool, which is fantastic because that's going to help you, provided that your survey tool is doing the right thing with the framework. And let's talk about effective framework. And this goes, this is universal, whether you're using iAdvantage tools or not, this makes sense for everybody, doesn't it, Jamie? That's right. That's right. So, so our whole company, because we're based by, founded by scientists and we based it all on scientific methodology, it means that we don't rush into the act of collecting data, we rush into the act of designing how we're gonna collect the data. It ensures that we get a real life uh, cycle out of all our data. So it's the basics of data management, which means, yeah, we can collect data in all sorts of formats, but what you can't do is go back and recreate data from the past. And you can't sit there and always say, well, I assume that's what they meant, such like that. So. Our products framework allows you to ensure that your data collected is again that true north. There's report generation capability, which allows us to report on it as it's collected. So how many times have we sent an email out and we wait for people to respond? And then before you know it, you get into some other project. And before you know it, you're, you're sitting there frustrated on a Friday night trying to jam all this into one cohesive piece from all these different emails. We reduce data management costs because we're in the cloud and because we're in a relational database uh, of Oracle on the cloud, it basically enables us to not only use the data from the past, but ensure that our data in the future all is cohesive as a single view as you grow it. So you can augment it, add new columns. I wanna ask them this extra question. Perhaps you wanna find out some new views, but it allows your data scientists to really maximize that whole Oracle database. You minimize errors. When you collect data, you can't just give them another all the time. It might be another, but you got to make sure you plan that out. So this way, two people entering street in, one might put ST, one might put street. We know that old issue. Um, in our case, we make sure we form them to answer the question in the sense of what we want, a pick list that, that matches up good. Again, immediate access. You have to be able to see what's going on because you, you go out and you're going to collect data on Monday. You don't want to wait. You're going to ask for an update. I'm sure your boss is going to say, hey, how's that going? How far are we getting ahead? So it's almost like you can run your dashboard straight from our product to see from the database. Finally, we right now, as we speak, there's 500 active data collections, 900 sites in multiple countries. Sometimes we even start it right away. So in other words, we might deploy this to be ready to go on a Monday morning. And that's in multiple languages. So right now, often because the Southern Hemisphere is collecting data, they're putting it in other languages, such as Portuguese. And, that, and that's fantastic. I want to share one thing here. I'm going to share the results. Um, so it's it's close. 39% for spreadsheet. Bunch of folks using paper forms as well. Um, survey tool. And I have Heather that says all of the above is how many places get their info. You are correct, Heather. And there, there's a, there's depends on what you're doing and how it, and how it's happening. So I appreciate that feedback from you, Heather. But there you have it. 
A lot of folks using spreadsheets, which is one of the main reasons why you have the issues coming in of, of how to correct, right? Making That's sure fine. that the integrity of the data is right and making sure that it doesn't get jacked up because somebody filled in something and fixed it later. Yep. And and then if it, if it wind up getting deleted altogether, if it's on some kind of shared shared form. That's right. So, Many people can see a spreadsheet a different way and make it that way if they'd like at times. And, and you know that's true. Everybody knows that's true. <laughs> so let's talk about the e-study platform. Sure. So your platform is based back on in, that, in the scientific method, right? That's right. And, and take us through how this works so people can see what the structure needs to look like. Whether you're using iAdvantage software or not, the structure still is good, right? That's right. So, so first, you, what we do is we start off with, with requirements. And you see eStudy Manager. eStudy Manager is where the person who, who's going to control this collection starts. And that's where you work with us a little bit at first as part of our package on, on training. And we learn how to basically, in a cohesive way, design the collection methods we're going to have. Now, remember, this thing runs on web. So right now, it's running on Azure as a front end. Uh, for the website and then Oracle as the background. We think we took the best of both worlds and we've maximized your ability. And someday, by the way, with things like um, the, our ability to get ready, we, we're going to be able to do FedRAMP, for instance, with Azure. So when we have the right customer who needs it, FedRAMP's going to be an option for us because we're already in the cloud. A lot of people are in hybrid clouds and such like that. So you start off with these study manager as that as a designer, and you're putting together carefully all the things you want to be collected. This is pre-thinking and really formatting it so that it can be deployed later. Then we go ahead and we put the, put, push the notebooks out. This is uh, can be uh, on, a, on an iPad. It can be on a Windows uh, native machine. It can be also on Windows on a web machine. And so anything you can carry in your hand, a tablet, something that's convenient, something mobile. And even if you don't have network, it still allows you to collect it. And it actually keeps it encrypted on that device. So then when you deploy it, you put it out there and you publish it for all these people. You might have five, you might have 10, you might have a thousand. They can all be done at the same time and they all are collected uniformly. And as the data is collected and as they become network aware, boom, the data gets into the Oracle database. So now you have the ability to access that data from, hey, I need to do a quick uh, status report. Uh, I need to do maybe a special report from my boss to tell them how far we've gotten in the three days or what a lot of our customers do. We have to submit this to an agency and they wanna see it this way. And we need everyone to conform who's collecting this data, not just the master designer, but all the people who are in charge of collecting the data through the distribution channels. They can put it all into the same format. And it's not done by you merging it and doing Word and copying and pasting. It's done automatically for you. So when you put all that together, you're, you basically have this data available to you for what I would call standard reporting and, and such for, for agencies, as well as you can take the data and give it to your data scientists so you can get insights to your business. So that's where we see the analytical packages and stats packages. So all those together give us a complete framework. All so, those together enable us. So, so with that, when you when you think about what everybody should be looking at on the design work on the front end and the ability to be able to incorporate what you're doing and as an immediate dashboard so that those reports become easy for them to be able to deliver. Is that what we're That's talking right. about? And even if you have a, a, an idea later, for instance, say you said, oh, we forgot to ask them that one other thing. We, de we need to collect one other thing. Because we're using the scientific process, right? We always know, we always audit everything that happens. We always know how to retrace the steps. But in addition, we can add something for, for instance, we could say these three people or these three groups need to collect this additional question. And we can start doing it immediately. Right, that's fantastic. So there's a there's a couple of things you're going to dr drill down into. There's three components that we're going to drill down into. But let's talk about what what is eStudy. Now, that's that's your product, right? E -study? That's right. So eStudy comes in eStudy Manager. It has eStudy Notebook and has eStudy Publisher. Those are the parts of the framework. 
And when you have all those three together, that's where we feel like we have a success in data collections, not just for today, because most of the time you're not collecting data just for today. That's you're right. You're collecting for a, a long term. Our platform is flexible, so that it's web-based. Because it's sitting in Microsoft Azure, it's going to be addressable from pretty much anywhere. When we add in FedRAMP, when we have our customer who wants that, we're going to be able to have in that compliant role. Then you have data provenance, right? Data provenance is really important because of our audibility and such. If you ever have to go back in time and find out where that data was derived from, we're going to be the true test, right? We're going to be the, the data truth. The current uses include all these different ones, but some of the ones that are really tough with agencies are like toxicology, um, residue and environmental, the analytical, all of these come together. It shows that we've, we've cut our teeth on some pretty tough areas to collect data. And we've been relied on for over 20 years with all those people using it, that they know they can go back and find out where something may have occurred, but more so, a lot of our customers are finding they get where they're going to go next, right? The data is proving out their, uh, their theories. Awesome. And so let's talk about the, the three pieces. Um, you have your database back in, and we'll talk sure. about the, the manager as well. Go ahead. So in the breakdown, we're, we're going to actually get to the three in the next couple of slides, Dave. But right now, the key to remember, it's Oracle-based data. It's Oracle cloud-based data. That gives us so many opportunities in the world. It's 100% web-based architecture with Azure. It's scalable. So we don't have an issue if all of a sudden we need to do 10,000 collections versus 1,000. Right. It allows for data exchange and integration, meaning APIs and ability to put this data there. And in fact, there's the new world of microservices. Microservices, everyone's publishing these things. They're like programs that just live up in the cloud and we can you know that we have good security, good clarification of interface of how we get the data. So your data scientists will love this. We use something called, for instance, we pass data right now to a customer using something called JSON. You and I don't care what JSON is, <laughs> but I promise if there's any data scientists in this audience, they're gonna go, thank goodness that people are thinking about this already. Again, we're compliant with the GXP and 21 CFR part 11. This means if you're into the science world, and you are in the science research world, then you care about this because everything is going, this is not going to get less compliance. This is gonna be more compliance in time. And we're gonna grow because we gotta make sure that we're all doing things in the same way because we want good science in the end. Immediate access results. Again, I can't stress this enough that you always have the ability to go look at what your data is doing which you're not waiting. You're not waiting for it to all be collected. You can see it as it grows. And then finally, it's quickly or easily customized. You're going to have times when you might not have asked a question. In fact, a new question might come out from questions being asked today, but you don't want to have to say, oh, another email. By the way, can you please reload all these things and put this back out and add this and then confuse them? And I get easily confused when I don't when I get two of the same things, I go, well, which one am I supposed to look at? Even though I should know. Well, yeah, that's fantastic. So like you said, there's three different areas. Right. E-study manager is, your, is, the, is the tool. So manager is where the guy who's thinking about this data collection, that's where he starts. He wants to collect all this data. He's got to plan it out. He's going to get it basically designed out. And remember, this were scientists that had this same, I guess, driver, this same business driver. They needed to do something and do it once. Again, measure twi twice, cut once. And so they came up with this product originally, which was a way to replace paper. I don't know if you saw the survey a while ago, 10% of our audience still uses paper. Still using paper. So and a whole not, bunch of them using spreadsheets. I don't wanna, I don't wanna say it's bad. It's, you know, paper works. Yeah. And I know it's painful because everything that, you, that someone writes, you have to read. You quickly create studies along with all the sporting study. In other words, everything that you, bring in your protocol, your, your plan, your requirements comes in, you put that all together and you basically plan it out. You can plan it out for long-term. In other words, at the beginning of the year, I can plan out the rest of the year for my data collections and I can have them all ready to go. So I work once, right? And I plan it all out, build it, and then check it before I release it and get it out there. And the final thing, it's really important that you know that this is secure and that the people who can see the data they're supposed to can see it, but the ones who shouldn't 
can't sneak in and see some data. It's very important. We're very, uh, I guess you would say, uh, detail-oriented on how much we allow certain people to see, and we have a lot of structure on who's allowed to give who access to data. And, and with the with everybody poking in, trying to get to stuff nowadays, uh, it's not that that is not something that needs to be taken lightly either with all the security cyber stuff. So appreciate right. that too. So notebook manager, what does that so, mean? So after you've you've done all your work with designing the study, now you have these notebooks you got to put out. This these these mobile devices have to be enabled to collect the data. Could be all over the world, could be some areas, could be that you want it from a, one part of the world, different from another part at different times. Again, online and offline. Sometimes you don't have networks in the middle of where I grew up in Oklahoma. There might not be networks. Uh, and so you have to be able to then walk over. In fact, I had one customer whose uh, uh, users took their iPads and went near a mall in South America in order for the data to be enabled to, to go up to the database. So we encrypt it on the device so no one can break into it. And then they know that when they get to the network, it'll automatically go ahead and update. So we we're driven to these compliances because we, we feel like as part of science, you have to not only ensure that you know how it's gonna be collected, but that in the end it is collected in a safe and in a compliant way. And the compliancy could be one of many. There's, there's quite a few compliancies, but we do tend to always think about GXP and 21 CFR part 11 for human studies. And then finally, there's publisher. And publisher is the ability to take that data and now put it somewhere in an, into reports, whether it's a status report, just see what's going on every Monday or every morning. It's also for you to be able to put it into an agency in their standard format that they expect to be in there and not have to do a copy and paste, but to literally have it generated. And, and this is a big time saver. This is a huge time saver because some of this data can be quite long. Some of these tables can be thousands, if not more rows. And the formats are constantly built and you build it, you build the template, you bring it in and you say, okay, let's put out this report for this agency. And this alone is probably one of the chief reasons that so many of our customers love our product. Yep, yep. I love it. So just a quick recap, as far as the workflow, biggest part and one of the main reasons for being here today is making sure that your design, no matter what system you're using, get your design straight. Isn't That's that right? right? That's right. So you don't want to just start building an Excel spreadsheet and then have columns grow or people reshuffle them. This ensures because it's a relational database, it's looking at the data differently on our platform. You design it, you organize it the way you want it to be to go out. You then have it collected in the notebooks. Um, we use notebooks loosely. It's really just a mobile device or your, <laughs> your Windows machine. Um, and then finally, you have it all there for reporting as you need or in some kind of strict format. And and one of the things that makes it so easy is because you guys are, you're doing this right now to support USDA right. and EPA, right? So when you're That's creating right. those reports, you're creating them the way that USDA wants to see them. And they're it's not the same as EPA, right? That's right. So, they so, each want it differently. That's correct. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes we have to do that. So yeah, you can see in here, it shows you the biology sites. By the way, these are these are strict sites that are out there that are doing some very distinct testing with, with seeds and chemicals and such and in soil. And they're collecting the data. And this could be anywhere. I think this particular example is, is well over 20 sites around the world. Um, we also have to collect data from the analytical labs. We also have to have the chemistry that makes checks. So, these things that are done in the field have to be sent into these places and they have to have notebooks to put their data in. And guess what? They tend not to want to see each other's stuff, right? <laughs> and, and then in the end, the, st the study master has to be able to create the reports for USDA and EPA, as you say, in separate but equal uh, formats. And then finally, you have to be able to always go back. You have to be able to pass an audit. You have to be able to say, here we've used good practice. So at the end of their testing, they actually have to go back and say, did this all follow the rules as the original guy planned? And, and so as we look at this, it, this is not just restricted to just USDA and EPA. And, and to, um, I don't remember who it was that said this earlier about what is the difference between R&D data collection and data collection. Right. 
There's the really answer no is difference. there's no difference at all. The same practice, the same methodology will prevent tremendous headaches and a lot of unknowns. With data science emerging so much, the first thing that data science asks you about is where's your data set? And then they ask you, okay, that's your data. What? Tell me, tell me about it. Give me some idea of what this originated, why you developed this, why did you collect it? You know, when you collected, what did, had you plan? And so when you put all of that into a single bucket, it works for everyone. And that's why we've listed out, it, we think it could be used to collect data from all sorts of uses um, into all sorts of agencies and for them to get insights and figure out new things that maybe they weren't picking up for on before. And because because you're defining the data well in the front end and you're and you're locking that down, you still have the flexibility to change it if you want to. That's right. But it's That's changed right. within the structure so that everything can be can be um, can be followed. Now, we're going to get some questions in just a second. Um, and, but I do want to ask this question. We asked this on the way in and there was a ton of people that have that have data collection requirements happening right now. All the way. You know, we're, we're in Q4 right now. So. So immediately means right now, and then Q4 means like by the end of September, as you guys know. So, um, and we do have some information coming in. I have one from Janet. Does your program have an audit trail? Yeah, I'm sorry. Janet, Janet asked the question, does your program have an audit trail? Yes, yes. In fact, that's a, a primary re requirement for all of our cl clients. So and we can kind go of, back and retrace everything that a notebook did. And in fact, a lot of people who have these collections use it to self-audit and then also to provide back to the people who would maybe want to audit them. And, and so that kind of goes, Zareeb asked the question, how do you verify data hasn't changed? It's the same type of, it's the same type. You actually have to sign in. If you do change something, you actually have to say who you are and why you changed it. And that right. becomes part of the audit. And I had a question here. Hold on a second. Come on, get my chat going here. Here we go. Um, first of all, Jacqueline says she's from Chicago, but living in Ravens territory. We welcome you from Chicago <laughs> to our Ravens territory. That's the first thing. That's the most important. Anyway, uh, can you study analyze quantitative data, transforming it to quantitative, qualitative data, transforming it to quantitative data? Wow. That's yeah. a good question. So, so that definitely addresses the fact, if you, if you remember that diagram on the far right, we have to provide this data to the people who do that, um, whether it's a SAS type user. I, I'm not sure if you have the screen, but- Which one, one, which one is it? The one that shows the whole system, um, our whole environment. I'm going back, this one? Yeah, so if you oh, look on the, on the far right, you see where it says statistical package, analytical packages. Our, our data is used by the various people who use this data and transforming it. Um, we, we are the true north of where the data was collected, but we're not the ones who, who transform it. So, so there, there's a key difference there is that, is that the, once you get the data in, you have the ability to utilize it wherever you want. That's right. Let me close this out. A lot of folks, a lot of folks have an immediate need. I'll share that so that you know what, what's happening there. Nice. A lot of folks. So um, you guys will get some additional information there. Let me pause this so that I can fast forward this back to where we were. All right. right. So the key takeaways for this is take advantage of, of the scientific methodology uh, that's available to you and that how that works out better for you. Right. That's so right. Build the build your framework around the scientific methodology. It's going to help you with the good design on the front end means good data on the back end and scaling. Everybody knows this. And we know that they're there where agencies are spending millions of dollars to try to clean things up that could have been fixed if they were done right in the first place. Right, Jamie? That's right. That's right. It's, it's growing so fast, we're not able to even go back. We all want to do the same thing, go back and fix it. Well, how about this? Let's fix it up front. So um, let me, there, I think there might be another one from earlier. Um, how could research management centers provide effective reporting on research performance for the organization? I think that you laid that out and the ability to create the reports, right? That's right, that's right. Report design is just as important as, um, as your data design, your data collection design. 
it's a it's a critical factor to success when you do a good report that shows people what they want to see or whatever summaries they may want to see. But the good news is, is you can go back and rerun them because our data always stays true. And that that's the key. And we we see a lot of we see a lot of wiggy data out there. Um, and and it's not because they're not trying to collect the good data or the right data. It's that the methodology from the beginning winds up being a challenge, right? That's right. So um, I will get to what, what's coming to your, your direction in just a minute. But, and I said this earlier, by attending this, you are not obligated or any other reason to purchase from any vendor, including iAdvantage. But if you want to, you can, because you guys are GSA contract holders. And if they need a particular socioeconomic set aside or other way to be able to, um, to purchase this, you are willing to work with anybody. Uh, you have partners that you already have, but you will talk with procurement, which brings us up to, to the, uh, the question that was asked about what does the contracting officer have to do with this? And that this is exactly it. You can help make sure that your agency is, is coming off on the right foot. Right, Jamie? That's right. And you do have a GSA contract on hand. And if you need any additional information, you got the number right there. And we'll make sure you have that in the follow-up, which, by the way, you will get a recap email early next week. You will get an immediate email with access to, to this, but you also get one that's a more finished, polished a briefing presentation and recording, as well as any additional information that comes back from, from this communication. You'll have the link to the iAdvantage capabilities, and you can meet with Jamie and his team one-on-one. -on -one. And how much does it cost to meet with you, Jamie? It costs absolutely nothing. And we like that. We like seeing cool new problems so we can come up with cool new ideas to solve. <laughs> hey, you got somebody who wants to help you with your problems right there for free, ladies and gentlemen. So, so there you have it. We will answer a couple more questions. If you need to reach Jamie directly, here's his contact information. I want, I'll get to this Q&A right now. Um, Let's see, do you have a sample to share? Great question, Sarah. I think what we'll do is we'll get you with Jamie and you'll see the samples. It will be, they'll, they'll make the sample right for the way that you want to see it, as a matter yeah, of fact. Absolutely, yeah, we'll fit your story. What is what is it you like to see? Sure. So uh, Terry's asking, when do you expect to obtain authority to operate within the VA? Great question, Terry. I don't know the answer to that. Don't How know about that. We talk, we'll talk about that. We'll make sure we get, get to the people that you need to know. Uh, are any of these providers on NASA soup? Great question, Eric. Uh, the answer is I'm not, I don't know that they're on NASA soup, but if you need it, I guarantee you, because I know Joanne Wojtek and she can make it happen within an hour. <laughs> if you need to buy it through NASA soup, I promise you, we can get you, get it on NASA soup with, with as quickly as possible. And I may have missed it, but is there an ETA on FedRAMP? So, so so most of that, you know, the, the beauty of the new world, um, we're, we're not having to do a lot of work as, as much as Microsoft already has done a lot of it for us. That's right. So actually what we're going through is just what I would call the steps. So I would imagine that's a Q, you know, we're about, we're at the end of Q3 going into Q4. I would think in Q4, and especially if we have a customer, we can make that happen. Yeah. Customers always make things happen, doesn't it? Absolutely. I mean, you, if there's, there's butts on fire, stuff gets done. On the inside of the government and on the outside of the government. That's a universal, that's a universal thing. You put that in a proverb. What's on fire, things get done. <laughs> All right. So uh, any other, let me make sure I didn't miss anything else. I don't think so. Um, any Q&A? There's like so many different places you can put this stuff. Uh, but I think we did it. And if that doesn't... If you have any more questions, you can shoot them right to Jamie. If you if you need to reach anything for us, support at govbrief.us and we'll get to me. And if there's anything that we need to pass on, we'll make sure that Jamie gets it. And, and otherwise, we did it. We we did it uh, in 40 minutes. Nice. Jamie, you're a rock star. Thank you very All much right. for being here. And uh, we appreciate what you guys do and what you're setting up for these folks so they don't have to deal with bad data on the back end. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dave. And thank you, right. everyone, for coming. Appreciate you guys. Expect that follow-up email and we will see you next time. Thanks again, Jamie. Yep. Bye.